All right, this is uh, like a little part two on comic book production, kind of. Um, last time we touched on uh, basically the guidelines and everything on comic book paper. <clears throat> this time I'm just going to talk about some of the tools I use. It's going to be a long video, so I apologize already. Um, it's just going to go over, I don't know why these are in there, and those are dividers from our case. Um, I'm just going to go over some stuff that I frequently use when uh, producing comics or just doing original artwork in general. I'm going to start off with paper. Um, paper does not matter. Test it out um, using whatever art tools you use. Uh, whatever pens, whatever markers, test out different papers and figure out what works best for your application. That's the bottom line. I prefer Bristol when working on my comics. Um, everything I do is inked, um, especially with nibs and Bristol seems to hold the ink the best on the surface of the paper. Um, I use smooth Bristol, not vellum. Um, vellum is more, it's toothier, it's a rougher surface, and it causes, it can cause the ink to feather or bleed, and uh, it can cause like little bouncy action with your pen when you're drawing. Um, so I use smooth Bristol, various companies, various qualities, um, so was like this is a, a a cheap crappy piece of Bristol that I just use for like pen training and stuff and testing out nibs. Um, I use 11 by 17 copy paper for doing roughs and manuscripting and underdrawing and sketches and page layout and blah 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 blah. 14 by 17 Bristol by Canson. This is the foundation series. It's like the Strathmore 300. Um, I buy 14 by 17 so I can cut three inches off one side and do 11 by 17 when I really desperately need comic paper or if I'm doing a cover or something where I don't care about guidelines so much. Um, I just draw the guidelines on colored pencil or pen or don't care about them at all. Um, again, 14 by 17 Strathmore 300, all smooth. Um, so um, 11 by 14 smooth. Uh, I think in the other video I said I put a 10 by 15 panel on 11 by 14. I don't know why I said that. Um, because I actually use smaller. I reduce it from 10 by 15 down to another two to three ratio for when I do 11 by 14 production. <laughs> but I don't do that that much anymore. This is where my most of my original artwork is done on is 11 by 14. And then I have some Canton Fanboy 11 by 17 pre-lined stuff. Um, sealed up, I have some IC Maxon and Deleter uh, manga paper, um, B4 size, and a little bit of A4 laying around here and there. Um, I also have some Strathmore 500 11 by 14 and some Strathmore 500 11 by 17. Um, and I have my Eon. I don't know if I just said this, but I have my Eon and Blue Line um, stuff, my uh, comic boards. On away from paper onto tools of the trade, I have a jar which is just I repurpose all my jars into random stuff. Um, it's I keep this with, filled with water to clean brushes and pens. Drafting tape, a bunch of rolls of this stuff, thumbtacks. I'll go into uses for all these, and then um, triangles, French curves, rulers, and templates and stuff like that. Uh, my general rule of thumb is anytime you're dealing with a drawing, if you can use a template or straight edge or whatever, use it. Um, it helps. Don't skimp out on uh, line quality just because you're you know trying to rush it. Um, especially, I mean, just even if you're doing your pencils and you want to give it an organic feeling, if it's like a brick building, use the ruler at some point. You're going to make sure your perspective's on point and everything else. On to pens. You do not need as many pens as I have at all. Figure out what you're going to use and use just that. Um, I kind of adhere to, to two is one and one is none. Um, I have redundant amounts of inks, redundant amounts of tips, some that I don't even really use. Same with brushes and markers and pen. It just find one tool that you like. If it's a pencil and you like the pencil and regular graphite, find a pencil that you like, a mechanical pencil that can do everything for you. Um, I'm a blue pencil guy. I do most of my sketching in blue. Um, I do all my penciling before inks in blue because I feel that it gives me a higher contrast between the ink and the paper so I can do my, my black balance and white balance a little bit better when inking. Um, so we'll start off. Um, I use dip pens. Let's go through them real quick. Um, again, like I said, I'm redundant. Um, so these are my dip pens. Um, I have an empty pen holder. Um, it seems to be sized a little weird, or I don't know if ink dried in there, but it doesn't hold all my pen nibs properly. Um, Hunt 102 Crow Quill. I use this a lot for fine detail and um, flexible lines. Um, 
a lot, especially if I'm teaming it up with brushing. Uh, brushing. Here. Um, that's like the traditional American comic thing, you know, Windsor Newton 7 size 2 and, um, you know, uh, 102 Crowquill. Um, other than that, I use a lot of Japanese nibs. I find that they last a little bit longer than the Speedball stuff or Hunt series. Um, and uh, I like the lines they produce. So, <clears throat> so it's, I have three G pens of various purposes um, with different holders um, and then one round pen. Um, I use round pens a lot for backgrounds and facial details and everything that I don't use the 102 with. The 102 can produce a wider, it does produce a wider line than the um, mapping pen, round pen. Um, I have a thing full of nibs that's just got redundant amount of different nibs. Um, I'm going to do another segment on nib inking where I'll go into more detail about that. This is actually my second take on the video. The first one was way too long. Um, I'm going to pencils. And like I said, I'm redundant. I keep more supplies on hand in my case than I need to, but you never know. Um, again, I said I'm a blue pencil guy. So here you have, I use my trusty Prismacolor Cole Erase Non-Photo Blue. Um, I recommend most people probably go with a darker shade blue than this. The lead is rather hard and the Non-Photo Blue is really, really hard to see. You have to bear down pretty heavy on it and that can damage your paper. So if you don't wanna use mechanical pencil, mainly because this erases extremely well. Even after you've built up enough lead in one area to be able to see it rather well, it still erases fantastically. The Prismacolor Col uh, Col Erase or Color Erase pencils are amazing. Um, just go with a darker blue unless you can see the lighter blue. I can see it, I use this mainly for doing rough sketches and everything. I have in my Rotring 500, I love this pencil, when it comes to Mechanical pencils and your recommendations there, use whatever you like. I like lighter pencils nowadays. I used to use the full metal body Rotring and Koinor pencils. Um, I lost them and they were stolen also over the years. So I switched to the Stadler pencils because they're easily available and I got used to light pencils. And so now I use the Rotring 500 for a lot of things. I like the shape and I like the knurled grip rather than the plasticky grip. Um, I use a mixture of 0.07 to 0.05 millimeter leads. Um, the 0.05, so I use 0.04 and 0.03 sometimes, but I don't keep them on hand for really fine details. I find that 5 um, works really well for me, so does 7. It's really whatever you want to use. I use 7 definitely when sketching. Um, my blue is a 7, and like I said, I use blue the most. Um, for mechanical pencils, I use Pilot Neox um, non-photo blue, and this stuff is amazing. Um, it is made in Japan and sold in Japan, so find some places. I know Jet Pen sells it. That's actually where I bought it. Um, it's probably the best. Um, it's not overly soft or um, it doesn't break too easily like the old Pilot um, soft blue stuff. But this does have a tendency to stain the paper just ever so slightly. If I am doing comic book production, you can bet that all my pre-ink pencils are going to be done in this on the Bristol. Just because once I scan it in it, you won't see it. I do not scan, I'll get into that in another video, but you don't see it with the way I scan my artwork. Um, so mechanical pencil, doesn't matter which one, those are the ones I use. By no means are my art tools the absolute best or what I tell you you should use, it's just what I use. It gives you an idea if you're interested in doing um, comic book art or manga, um, which is a little redundant to say, but um, next are my brushes. I have some Windsor Newton Professional Series watercolor brushes, plus some Grumbacher. Um, I use sizes 3, 4, and I have a 5 aught that I don't use for anything. It's a 5 aught min uh, miniature brush, and I don't use it for anything. It's pointless. Um, the bigger the... I'll, t I'll do a segment on brushes, too. Um, I also use Windsor Newton Series 7, um, size 2, 3, 4, and 6, and Raphael 8404s. However, I no longer have my Windsor Newtons. They were stolen and my Raphaels got damaged um, during my moving process a while back. I do have some more Raphaels coming out. Um, note on that, the Raphaels seem to be a little bit more consistent, so I recommend buying Raphael 8404 series brushes. Anyway, pencil sharpener, made by like General or something like that. Um, I use it for my non-photo blue pencils. Um, some erasers. Um, I recommend getting PVC or you know white vinyl erasers. 
Um, PVC erasers are hard to find because I think the government banned them. I'm not sure, but that's what I've heard. Um, the old Tombow mono eraser, which is my go-to eraser that I could get uh, imported rather easily in uh, like jet pens and everybody used to carry them. Um, they sell a non-PVC version, which is not as good as the original version. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can get some imported. Uh, I think it does use a banned chemical, but um, I should be able to import them legally. Who knows? I'll figure that out. Um, if anybody knows a domestic source to get the original Tombow Mono um, plastic eraser uh, in the blue, let me know because I love those erasers. Really, any eraser that erases pencil and doesn't damage um, your paper, it will work. Um, I have a kneaded eraser. I'm not a big fan of these. I know people that swear by them. Um, I find that they just don't erase pencil as well as I like them to. And um, I use them mainly for lightening my pencils when sketching if I don't want to completely erase something. Stadler uh, Mars Plastic is a great eraser. It's not too hard on the paper. Um, it does produce a lot of dust, which doesn't really matter. You feather dust it away. It, does, it doesn't matter. Um, however, the Faber-Castell Dust Free um, do produce dust, but not that much, and it does clump together, but it's very soft on the paper and picks up pencil lines very, very well. This is kind of my go-to eraser nowadays. I like them a lot. Um, the Factus White Vinyl are, are pretty good too. Um, Really, any eraser that doesn't damage the paper that you're using, um, that picks up the pencil will work. Now for my millimeter pigment liner, whatever you want to call them, and markers. I use Stedler pigment liners. They have a good line quality. It's very consistent. Um, a little bit more so than the Microns in my opinion. Good quality ink. Not available in brush pens and stuff like that. It's more of a technical pen rather than an art. Um, it is archival quality, just like the Microns. I do have Microns. Note about the Microns is the sizes listed here, like the 05, 08, whatever, do not correlate to the actual size of the line. The 05 is a 0 0.45 millimeter. The 08 is a 0 0.5, I believe. Yeah, 0 0.5 millimeter. Whereas the Stadler, the 0 0.7 is a 0 0.7 millimeter pen. Just note that. <laughs> Um, these are good pens. They have good line quality and everything else. I like it. And my battery is probably going to die on this video, so I'm going to try to speed it up. Um, Prismacolor, uh, cool gray, 20 through 60%. Um, I use them just for sketching and some original artwork stuff. I do all my toning and gray scaling and everything for comics digitally. Only last thing I have is ink, and I have a redundant amount of ink. Um, my main two inks are my Kaime and Pilot inks from Japan. They're extremely good. They flow well. Um, I'm going to go into them more. Um, Speedball Pen Cleaner is great, um, but you can use water and everything for your pens as well. Speedball Super Black, Icy Super Black. Um, and then my white fluids that I use are my white deleter number two and Pro White. Um, these are the best two correction fluids I've found. Um, if you want a white ink that you can use with your pens to do like finer detail stuff and use it with your nib pen, Deleter number one works really well, and then Pen White. I think it's Dr. Martin's Pen White um, works really, really well as well. So, um, but that IC Super Black is like five years old, if not older. Um, it still works well. It's it's really aged, but it's got a nice. Uh, I like it. Um, condensing your inks is something I'll talk about later, and um, I do recommend it, especially for using your brush for inking. Um, the brushes I have, um, the main ones that you just saw are my, my beta or spot black brushes, um, so I don't use them too much. Um, I also have Fude pens and stuff like that that I use for spot blacks. I really like the uh, Pentel Fude, um, or brush pocket pen as they call it, um, although I have some on the way. Um, the Higgins black magic sucks don't use it um in fact i'm pretty sure that eon uh, who makes most of the artboards that i use actually says to avoid it like the plague um so i don't recommend it at all but that's the um basic i just hit the tripod whoops sorry about that people um that's the basic stuff that i use um I also have a portfolio I recommend it to keep your original artwork safe. Um, I have 11 by 17 that has plastic inserts and stuff like a three ring type thing and that's where I keep my, my comic book pages. Um, and 
so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or would like anything, you know, suggestions for future videos, if you want to know how to draw something or want to know um, something in particular about comic book production that I, you know, haven't done yet, leave it in the comments below and I will get to it. And uh, if it's a simple question, I may respond directly to you or I will make a video about it if I think that it needs more detail than what I can type out. Anyway, um, again, my name is Ryan and uh, until next time.